Guys, what's going on? James here, and I know, not the new background, it's the old background, and I wanted to explain why I think that Jameis Winston is going to lead the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to greatness for the 2018 and 2019 season. And now, I know, okay, I know, Jameis Winston, he's suspended for the first three weeks of the regular season, and James, you know, he's he's made terrible decision making, you know, and, and let's be honest, Jameis Winston has had his fair share of controversy, you know, dating, the most recent case being in 2016, mind you, but from his time in college with Florida State to his time with the Buccaneers, you know, Jameis Winston has had his fair, fair share of controversies, Poor decision making, you know, and all that other dark stuff that is associated with that. So I'm not stupid. I understand that, you know, James Winston has a lot of baggage with him right now, but I still think that he is the closest thing that the Bucks have had to a franchise quarterback in a long, long time long time and I feel that he's going to do really good for the Bucks this year despite him missing the first three games of the regular season. Um, we've seen it with guys like Tom Brady and a couple other quarterbacks in the past where you know they've been able to come back from these suspensions, do really, really well for themselves and go on and lead their teams to the playoffs and even greater uh, things past the playoffs. Now I know it's very uh, foolish to compare, at least on a playing level, a guy like Tom Brady and a guy like Jameis Winston, because Tom Brady's all the way up here, Jameis Winston's all the way here, but I think they both have a similar mentality um, with how they are as quarterbacks and moving forward with how they handle susp their, how they are going to be handling their suspensions and whatnot. So um, let's talk about the first reason that I think that Jameis Winston can lead the Buccaneers to greatness for the 2018 season, and that's his determination and his drive to win, dating all the way back from his time in Florida State and even in even in high school, okay? Because coming out of high school, he was born in Alabama and he was the top-rated quarterback prospect in the entire nation and he was also the top dual prospect in the nation because he played baseball as well. So since day number one, you know, Jameis was all about being the best. He just, he was the best at baseball. He was the best at football. And he did eventually decide to try and play both sports at Florida State. However, he finally focused on football and he was the best there. His first year, he was not, you know, playing. He was the red shirt freshman behind then starting quarterback EJ Manuel. However, in his second year, so he was a red shirt freshman, he led the Florida State Seminoles to a perfect 13 0 record. And keep in mind, I'm not a, a Florida State Seminoles fan. I actually root for Maryland, but uh, I can still see a pretty darn good record when I can see it. So leading the Florida State Seminoles to a perfect 13-0 record in his first year, that's pretty impressive. Now, obviously, a lot of quarterbacks have done that before. You know, he's not the first. He certainly won't be the last. But what was so interesting is how many awards Jameis Winston won that year. He was the ACC Offensive Player of the Year, the ACC Player of the Year. He won the Walter Camp uh, Award. He won the O'Brien Award. He won the Manning Award, among a couple other awards. And on top of all of that, he was a consensus All-American his redshirt freshman year, and he won the Heisman. He's the second freshman ever to win the Heisman behind the, the former winner, Johnny Manziel, and he's the youngest player to ever win the Heisman, ever. Ever. The youngest player ever to win the Heisman was Jameis Winston. So that was his first year in college. And that's when you really started to see that Jameis Winston was a winner. He would go on to win the uh, national championship that year against Auburn. And he was developing this moniker as a guy who was just flat out good. He had 40 touchdowns to, so I believe, 10 interceptions. And the guy could just win. He was willing to do whatever it took to win. And then it, it even bled more into his next season because he would again lead the Florida State Seminoles to a perfect 13-0 record. He didn't lose at that point. He was 26-0 in his collegiate career. His team would go to the Rose Bowl where they would face Marcus Mariota and the Oregon Ducks, and they would lose to them. Um, that would be Jameis Winston's one and only loss in college football was in the Rose Bowl, his final game ever, and then he would declare for the NFL draft. Now, I will say a big knock on Jameis since college has been his, uh, ab not ability, but has been his problems with turning the ball over. People say that he tries so hard to win that he'll, you know, try and force passes. He'll have poor decision making, which leads to interceptions. And fair point, he did have, I believe, 25 touchdowns to 18 interceptions in his second year in college. But 
he still let him do a perfect 13-0 record, so it is what it is. After this, he would declare for the NFL draft, and those turnover problems would rear their ugly head again, as well as the personal issues, because while a lot of people thought that Jameis was the more pro-ready um, prospect whenever the Buccaneers were picking at number one overall, a lot of people thought that the other quarterback who had declared for this draft, Marcus Mariota, the one guy who had beaten Jameis in college, was the safer pick due to his his off field uh, clean, cleanliness, if, I guess if you want to call it that, and his ability to be more mobile than Jameis and just have overall more versatility. However, the Buccaneers did decide to go with Jameis Winston. Lovey Smith loved him. Jason Light agreed, and they were like, yep, let's do it. And they got Jameis Winston with the number one overall pick in the 2015 NFL Draft. Now, this is where things start to get pretty good. His first year, James' first year, obviously it's different. You're not going to be as successful in college as you were in the pros. Not many. There's a large, large, large amount of players who aren't as successful in college as they are in the NFL, and this could show. James' first year, he was the starting quarterback from day number one. He went 6-10 as his first year, and Lovey Smith was fired. I will say during this year as well, his first pass ever as a pro was intercepted for a touchdown again. Marcus Mariota and the Tennessee Titans. So that, that Marcus Mariota, he's always jabbing at Winston with these things. I mean, he didn't intercept the pass, but you know what I mean. So that's actually the first time that something like that's happened to a rookie quarterback since Brett Favre did it in 1991, a player who a lot of people actually compare Jameis Winston to. They always either compare Jameis to Brett Favre or they compare him to Ben Roethlisberger. Both guys who actually have some personal demons of their own, and uh, they actually have their big guys with big arms and their gunslingers, and they turn the ball over a lot. So those three just mix so well together, don't they? Uh, Jameis would finish the year with actually 4,042 passing yards, 22 touchdowns, and 15 interceptions. So he had a ton of passing yards. He had a decent number of touchdowns, if I'm being honest. But you know, those turnovers were still there. They were still a little bit of a problem. Lowy Smith would be fired. Dirk Cutter would be promoted to the head coaching position and that second year for James's uh second year ever being in the league things actually started to look up the Bucks were nine and seven honestly missing the playoffs by this much due to a tiebreaker with the Detroit Lions they could have won one more game and made the playoffs that's how close they were um and they had some really crappy uh stuff going on in the second half of the season where or sorry, the first half of the season where they just couldn't start well. If they would have started well, they would have made the playoffs easily. So it was, it was, it, it, we were close. Okay, we were close. Jameis would finish that year with 4,090 passing yards, 28 touchdowns, and 18 interceptions. So a pretty, pretty large amount of improvement um, from last season in the touchdowns category. He only threw a couple more interceptions, but still 15 and 18. Those are definitely up there. But the passing yards were up, even though it's only slightly. The touchdowns were up by a good amount, and yes, the interceptions were up but the team was winning so this was a good thing you know James was starting to get into a groove a lot of people thought that his third year was going to be his breakout year things were looking good for the team and then some really crappy stuff happened the third year Dirk Cutter's third year James's third year some bad stuff happened the Bucks would go five and eleven James Winston would suffer a shoulder injury in week six versus the Arizona Cardinals and he would Either A, he miss a couple of games, or B, play hurt for what was the remainder of the season. And, you know, only playing in 13 games, Jameis still put up some pretty good numbers, in my opinion. He put up 3,504 passing yards, 19 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions, which, again, that's not too bad, if I'm being honest. And also, I forgot to mention this, um, he actually did make the Pro Bowl his first year um, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as a rookie, and that's actually the one... He's James is the first rookie for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to make the Pro Bowl in his rookie year. Derek Brooks hasn't done it. Rondé Barber, John Lynch, Warren Sapp. None of these people did it. Jameis is the one and only rookie for the Buccaneers to ever make the Pro Bowl in his rookie year. I'm just saying that's kind of cool. And even whenever you take a look into the uh, the deeper stats of Jameis and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, like it, it holds up, okay? Jameis is pretty good. He holds eight NFL records, which if you want to know them, look them up. I'm not going to name all of them here. And he holds a bevy of of Tampa Bay Buccaneers franchise record, such as the most passing yards in a season, the most passing touchdowns in a season, and the most seasons with 4,000 passing yards with two. Obviously, two out of three years ain't that bad. To go along with another 11 Bucks franchise records. So altogether, Jameis holds 14 Tampa Bay Buccaneers franchise records and eight NFL records. That's 
that's pretty good. And I know, I know, James the turnovers, James the turnovers. But honestly, I'm okay with it considering how Marcus Mariota has just as many, if not more turnovers. I'm pretty sure he has more turnovers. So I'm okay with it. Um, James Winston has played in 45 games for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, okay? That's the seventh, that's the seventh most all-time by a quarterback on the team. Um, the other quarterbacks that are above him have actually played in 49, 60, 64, 67, 76, and 79. So taking that 49 out of the equation, the second closest number is a 15-game difference. Keep that in mind for what I'm about to tell you, Okay. So despite in playing let in less games than these six other quarterbacks, I'm sure you, you can imagine in your heads who they are. I'm not going to say them here. But Jameis Winston is fifth all-time in passing yards for the Buccaneers franchise. He's fifth all-time in passing yards. He's fifth all-time in passing touchdowns. And he is sixth all-time in quarterback wins for the team. Now, I know the quarterback wins. One is James. He doesn't win a lot. He's only won, I believe, what, 20 games or something like that. Or no, not even. He only won 18 games because he, he missed out those two games that Ryan Fitzpatrick won in Jameis' third year. But the point is, is that Jameis is very, very close to being the best Buccaneers quarterback in franchise history, statistically speaking. Um, he's only, I believe, 3,000 yards shy of having the best in being number one in passing yards for the Buccaneers franchise. And he's only 15 touchdowns away from having the most touchdowns ever for a Buccaneers quarterback in franchise history. So give him one year and Jameis will be fine, okay? So what can we gather from all of what I just told you, okay? What, what can we gather from all this? One, Jameis is a winner. He, Jameis is competitive. Jameis will do whatever he can to win, okay? He will do whatever he can. Two, yes, the turnovers, the interceptions, you can call it a problem if you want, but he makes up for it with wonderful passing yards, really nice, you know, he has a good amount of passing touchdowns, better than we've seen from most quarterbacks on this team, you know, it's definitely better, and he just, he wants to win so bad, even whenever he was hurt, you know, he was playing, and he was trying his darndest, he was basically hurting himself even more out there trying to play and trying to win these games for the team because he's a winner he wants to win really bad when there's a problem on the team Jameis is one of the first guys to jump in and try and fix that problem be it a, a crappy call on a game be it player disputes you know whatever Jameis is an outspoken leader and Jameis will try and take care of the problem if he can now I know a lot of people again oh but James he's going to be suspended for three games but We've seen that Jameis can play in 13 games and still be productive. Again, playing in 13 games and having a stat line of 3,500 passing yards, that's that, that number alone, there's a handful of quarterbacks in the league who don't get that number throughout a whole season. I'm just saying. And then 19 touchdowns, yeah, it's a little bit low, but, he, you know, he was still hurt playing. You know, he was, a, he was hurt playing these games. So we can take that one away in 11 interceptions. Again, the interceptions were cut down, obviously, he was hurt, but you could tell that there was improvement there. In this offseason, for training camp, for preseason, Jameis has looked really, really, really good, okay? He's looked calm, he's looked poised in the pocket, he doesn't look as erratic as he usually does. He looks like he's fully healthy and he's ready to go. He's ready to be a productive quarterback for this team, and he's just ready to go out there and make plays. Now, it does suck that he will be missing the first three games of the year. However, I feel that like Tom Brady did before him, he's going to come back from the suspension. He's going to be insanely motivated to go out there, get some wins, especially depending on how the team's record would be, and go out there and just prove to everybody that he is the franchise quarterback that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers need. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I think about all this. Um, and he has an insanely... Uh, impressive offensive um, uh, offensive weapons at his disposal. He has a good assortment of offensive weapons. Mike Evans, Deshaun Jackson, Chris Godwin, Adam Humphreys, O.J. Howard, Cameron Brait, not even mentioning the running game. You guys know all these weapons that Jameis Winston has. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think about all of this down in the comments section below. Do you think that Jameis Winston is going to do good this year? Do you think he's going to do bad? Do you think that Jameis is our franchise quarterback? Do you think he's not our franchise quarterback? Let me know all of this down in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And yeah, go check out the Patreon. Go check out my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. 
got it all in the description below. Uh, especially check out that Patreon. I'm trying to make this my, not my, yeah, I'm trying to make this my job, essentially. So it, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. And as always, I will see you in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, see ya and go Bucks.